Hi everyone, I'm back to read A Peek into the Past, Christmas in 1854 from the Kirsten book. Book three. On the American frontier, Christmas was a time for special celebration. Settlers like the Larsons had a lot to celebrate. They had found new homes, they had good food, good health, and good neighbors. They were building new lives in America, including American Christmas traditions. Just as people on the frontier taught one another good ways to farm, build houses, and to care for animals, they also shared the ways of celebrating Christmas. Kirsten told her cousins about the Swedish tradition of St. Lucia in return. Anna and Lisbeth probably showed her how they celebrated Christmas on their Minnesota farm. Their first Christmas in America would be a cheerful mix of old and new, Swedish and American traditions. For families living in frontier towns in 1854, there were Christmas fairs and dances, uh, church suppers, door-to-door -door caroling, and moonlight sleigh rides. But families who lived on farms had to make their own Christmas cheer. Their celebrations were quiet because frontier farms were far away from towns and from, a, and from one another. Their celebrations were simple because work always came first on the farm. Cows had to be milked, horses had to be fed, fences had to be mended, and firewood had to be chopped, even at Christmas time. Pioneer families like the Larsons couldn't celebrate Christmas for a whole month as they had in Sweden because there was too much work to do, to do just to survive. Winter was hard in Minnesota and the bitter cold, the wind and the snow were always dangerous enemies. Still, pioneers found some extra time to make Christmas special. Mothers and daughters started to prepare for Christmas by scrubbing every inch of the house from top to bottom. They washed all the clothes and quilts and curtains and hung them out in the brisk, clean December wind. Cabins would smell delicious as special Christmas foods were prepared. Mama may have taught Kirsten how to make breads, cookies, spice meats, and cheeses from, um, from her favorite Swedish Christmas recipes. Aunt Inger may have shown Kirsten and Mama how to cook a frontier feast of wild turkey stuffed with dried berries, and Miss Winston may have introduced them to pumpkin pie and Yankee cornbread. By 1854, Christmas decorations on the frontier came from many different countries. Some immigrant families decorated their cabins so that they looked like their homes in the old country. Mama would have draped bright woven cloths over the rafters and polished her brass candlesticks until they glowed, just like she had in Sweden. German immigrants introduced other pioneers to everyone's favorite Christmas decorations the Christmas tree. Children like Anna, Elizabeth, and Kirsten would have had a happy time decorating their tree with painted wooden hearts and little animals made from straw. They would have made ropes of dried berries too. Sometimes Swedish families in America decorated their barns for Christmas. They attached a large bunch of wheat to a long pole just outside the door. The wheat became a Christmas feast for the birds. Swedish tradi tradition said that a large flock of birds at Christmas time meant a good harvest the next year, and a good harvest was always important to a frontier family. Candles were too precious for pioneers to waste, but on Christmas Eve, a family like the Larsons may have kept the old Swedish tradition of lighting a candle in every window to show the way for Joltumten the Swedish Christmas elf. He always visited on Christmas Eve. Later, he gave gifts too. The gifts he brought to the American frontier would have been simple and useful. Perhaps there would be a pair of knitted mittens, a new hat or a scarf. Part of the fun of Joltumten came from the funny jokes, poems, and riddles written on the packages he brought. Before children could open their presents, they had to try to guess what was inside. What do you think this present could be? Red as berries, soft as kittens. These are for Kirsten, a new pair of blank mittens. Frontier families tried very hard to get to church on Christmas Day. 
Services went on all day long, but snow, cold, and work kept many families on the farm all day. After their chores were done, a family like the Larsons might gather around their tree. They would sing hymns, read the story of the first Christmas from the Bible, and give thanks to the blessings of their first American Christmas. And that is the end of our book, Kirsten's Surprise, Book 3, A Christmas Story from 1854. Hope you liked it.